All right. I brought one extra. Does anyone know who, know who, what this is? No, this is not Linux for Hank, but nice, nice choice. Speaking of which, so Linux for Hank, does anyone know who that is, what that is? Okay, so it's a little kid's book. I originally wrote that for that one. That's my daughter. All right, that's right. I brought one extra copy of this. Uh, who's the most deserving person? I have a kid. <laughs> okay, if you're under the age of 18, put your hands down. Lots of bad words. <laughs> you look deserving. You got... Dude, Romeo? Yeah. Romeo is deserving. I don't even know Romeo. <laughs> I'll, I'll scribble in it later if you want me to, but... All right, stuffed animals. We're going to do this a little bit less scientific. Oh! All right. Oh, this is a retoss? No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Did it bounce off your hand? It bounced off directly off my hand. All right, you get that. I'm not some jerk. All right. I was trying to throw it to you. No way, man. You're too close. You're too close. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, we got one more. All right. All right, the people in the back are really enthusiastic. I'm going to see if I can do this. Woo! Terror? What are you talking about, terror? <laughs> Talk for like a second. <laughs> That's really all I had beforehand. This is kind of weird having this little like viewfinder looking at me right now. Linux for narcissists. Linux for narcissists would be awesome. <laughs> Seven. The answer is two. Yeah, actually two. Yeah. Yeah, that's just bonus. That's in case everything goes badly. We have. I guess I could do one from back here. That's just proof. All right. Oh, come on. 
There's seats in there. It's okay, guys. Everyone, there's seats. Like there's seats over there. There's like this weird, someone must smell bad. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Sorry. Come on, come on, come on. We've got a few minutes. I have very little content anyway, so just squeeze on in. Same as always. Same as always. I prepared my usual amount for this. Come on in. Squeeze in. Squeeze in. Yeah, just to be clear, everyone is in the right place, right? They want to do this thing? All right. Come on in. All right. Are there, raise your hand if there's an empty seat next to you guys. All right. Hunt down the people with the hand raised. They have the seats. In three minutes, I will begin and start hucking things at people. So, we're fine. You already did that. I already did that? Less soft things. Yeah, like USB cables. SIM cards. SIM cards. Awesome. In case you get bored, just make sure you turn the sound all the way up. <laughs> I know. Marno Bando is already bored. All right. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Murmur, 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 murmur. Nice hackle. Very good. <laughs> All right, this is Linux's weird. So on the schedule, I should be very clear about this, it says Linux is freaking weird. I started doing this presentation over a year ago for last year's Linux Fest Northwest. It was simply called Linux is weird back then. Linux Fest Northwest turned me down and said I'm stupid and that I can't do this session. Now, that, to be fair, it, we, I've done a lot of sessions like this over the years, so they want something a little different. So I kept working on those slides over the course of a year, and I realized that just simply Linux is weird does not do Linux or weirdness justice when you start compiling together all the really weird stuff about Linux. So it became Linux is freaking weird. So it started as this, and then it became this. It became Linux is freaking weird. As I was finishing it up, it turned into something a little different. <laughs> now... Uh, this is yeah, totally accidental. Who knows why that happened? Now, here's the thing. Yesterday and into this morning, I started realizing that a lot of younger people would be attending this session. Uh, who all here is under the age of 18? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not too worried about corrupting you guys as making your parents pissed off at me. So I went through and edited this out. Now, there were anecdotes, which were not safe for children to be hearing about, um, as well as a large collection of Lil John lyrics. That, <laughs> that's not a joke. That comes later. So I've just gone through and blacked everything out. So if you're an adult, use your imagination, figure out what's underneath the black bar, and those are my true feelings. <laughs> Otherwise, this is just Linux is for gosh darn weird. So... Uh, again, vague references to swear words, but this disclaimer doesn't really apply much anymore because I think I've managed to take out all the swear words. Okay. Before we dive into this, clear your heads of preconceived notions. This is not anything like sessions I have done in the past. There's, there's no bait and switch here. I'm not going to tell you that Linux is weird and then halfway through go, gosh, no, it's not. Linux is freaking weird. <laughs> all the way through, all the way up until the very, very end. This is what this is about. And we're going to dive right into it. This is going to be fairly lightning round all the different things that make Linux so weird. Some of these you will be familiar with. Some of you might even be familiar with all of these. I'm hoping some of this is new to some of you, and if not, oh well, it's fun to rehash. <laughs> Let's start with crockpots. 
<laughs> this is a Linux-powered crockpot. Uh, <laughs> this is not a joke. This is, uh, what's it called? It's called uh, w w Wemo? Wemo? Does anyone know what this is? It's the Wemo. It's a home automation system, right? This crockpot is not only powered by Linux, but it power it's connected to a home automation system running Linux so that you can automate your crockpot. Does anyone have this crockpot? Does anyone have any... <laughs> <laughs> Linux-powered crockpot at home. <laughs> wait, 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 you have this? I have a device that I plug my espresso machine into, and it's a Wemo. That's not a crockpot, an espresso machine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, I, I get what you're saying. That's great. An espresso machine that's automated and home automated, that's cool. That's very Pee Wee Herman-esque. I love it. <laughs> this is a crockpot powered by Linux. This has been on sale for over a year and a half now, almost two years. They haven't pulled it off the market yet. <laughs> That's just straight up weird. And possibly the most useless thing I can think of putting Linux on. But it's also in this. This is the International Friggin' Space Station. I censored myself just there. <laughs> Not all of its systems are running Linux. But the vast majority are now. They've, they've upgraded a lot of their non-Linux systems to be Linux now. And it's Linux of a ver different set of varieties. They're not exactly running the stock desktop distros that we run. It's very pared down systems. But it's still Linux. And it's running the International Space Station. That's awesome. That's in space. <laughs> and it is not a crockpot. <laughs> Now this, <laughs> He's, now hold on, hold on, we'll get into this momentarily. So, all right, all right, all right. So these are robots, these are powered by Linux, the robots are powered by Linux, and it's a broader artificial intelligence framework that's being built over in Japan, obviously. Um, but these robots play soccer, and they're creepy. These are creepy soccer robots that are powered by Linux. Who saw that coming? In 1991, 92, when did Linus first check in the first thing he Linux? 91. 91, right? Do you think this was his plan? <laughs> I really don't think so. How weird is it that we went from a simple little kernel and operating system for x86 architectures to crazy, disturbing soccer robots? <laughs> in not that long a time. I mean, it's been around. I mean, we've been around for a while. We've got 25 years under our belts. But still, crazy, crazy. Here's just more of them. So this is the same one. It's the humanoid open platform. This is the same platform, again, Linux powered, that's powering those crazy soccer robots. And this one is brainwashing this poor young child. <laughs> <laughs> it's just freaking disturbing. All right. Let's get a couple of the big name things out of the way first. Oh, you have a question in the they, back. You want to interrupt me in the back. Yes. Did they seriously name that humanoid platform? Uh, the humanoid, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's actually got a larger name than that. If you look it up online, it's got like an acronym that you can't quite pronounce, and then it's the humanoid open platform. Yeah, that's that's totally real. This is the Large Hadron, Large Hadron Collider, which is, everyone knows what this is. The systems that they use for monitoring this and for running this are all based on Linux. Why? Because it's awesome, and this is the weirdest thing that humanity's built in a long time. <laughs> we built it, and it's powered by Linux, and that's awesome. Moving on. It's a nuclear submarine. So the whole submarine, not, not powered by Linux. Uh, <laughs> parts of it are powered by Linux. Specifically, there's a sonar application with, which, within these submarines that is powered by Linux. And it's actually kind of kind of interesting how they went about it. They built these little clusters that were off of the old, uh, the old Apple X serve G5 clusters. You guys remember those things? They ripped Mac OS X off those because, you know, and then they put <laughs> Linux on them, and they used them to detect, like, incoming threats and whatnot and have rapid responses to them. So it's basically like a, like a deterrent system, like you fire a shotgun at a missile coming at you, except it's in a submarine and powered by a supercomputing cluster running Linux. And this is, this is out there right now. There are submarines out there, nuclear-powered submarines out there running Linux on this as well as command and control modules. There's companies like Lockheed Martin that are developing this, a lot of times based on Linux. And that is extremely different than a crockpot. <laughs> this. This is an all-electric motorcycle. 
and it's powered by Linux. And it's got those in-dash dashboards like you'd have on like a, like a really high-end, like a, like a Prius or something like that that shows you how much mileage you're getting and shows you little smiley faces and whatnot on the dashboard. Again, all powered by Linux. And this is a crazy fast motorcycle. And I, I don't even know why it needs to be powered by hardly anything. But it is, and that is just so cool. Come on in. Squeeze all the way through. <laughs> this is this is a cow milker, which is a lot like this if you think about it. Both are powered by Linux and both are powered by electricity, so that's neat. This is a cow milking platform. I mean, they make actually a number of these things. The the Delaval Corporation they make a number of cow milking systems. And it's not just for having one system. They have distributed clusters of cow milkers that they can milk cows, measure them, measure them between different things. The cows are tagged with RFID chips so it can measure like output and quality of cows. It's the most insanely complex system. And it's amazing. And it's just a cow milker. And again, fully powered by Linux. It's got, it's got touchscreen add-ons you can get for it. It's insane. Powered by Linux. Cow milker API. I don't know. Is there a cow milker open API? There should be, right? Yeah, there must be. puts everything in SQLite databases and runs a recent kernel. I was just working on one of those. You worked on one of these? <laughs> Are you joking with me? I you know. worked on a Linux-powered cow milker. <laughs> I've done a lot of work with um, BI and Stats app. Sure, that's so cool. I'm working with ag tech groups right now to do feed analysis. Each cow captures roughly 200K a day. It's <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So 200K per day per cow of statistical data pulled in through automated lens powered cow milking systems. <laughs> that is friggin' awesome. Do you know what, uh, what distro is, are these running? I, I tried to find out. I, I emailed the company and I haven't heard back yet. I did a you name just like, embedded something, something, something. Oh, but it was running a Series. Part of me really wanted it to be like Archer Gentoo or something like that. <laughs> like, like I just, I just wanted it to be one of those. Slackware. Yes, yeah, Slackware. TiVo. Now TiVo has actually been powered by Linux. It has had some dubious relationships with the free and open source community to the point where Richard Stallman dubbed what they do TiVoization of open source. So maybe not necessarily the best example, but they're doing better lately with releasing stuff. So kudos on that. But it's not just TiVo, it's a lot of TV set-top boxes are powered by Linux. Again, TV is a little bit different than cow milkers. <laughs> this is the thing that continues to blow my mind, is every time you learn about something that's powered by Linux, it's entirely different than the last thing you heard of that was powered by Linux. Such as this. Watson, the, the one that, you know, went on Jeopardy, right? Now, Watson is not the most powerful supercomputer in the world, but it is the supercomputer that won on Jeopardy, and that's important. <laughs> and Watson nowadays does all sorts of stuff with natural language processing and artificial intelligence and all sorts of interesting things, but it competed on a game show. We had a Linux-powered box compete on a game show and win, and that is so cool. It's weird, though. Why would we want that? <laughs> Seriously, if you're thinking about this, I mean, like, okay, imagine the price is right. Why would we, as a species, say, let's make it so we don't need to compete in game shows anymore? <laughs> it's weird, right? I mean, awesome, but, but really, really weird. Also, I have never seen an in-flight entertainment thing on a plane crash, but I've always wanted to, and every flight I've taken that's had one of these, I've kept my camera ready, just in case. <laughs> Most of them are powered by Linux nowadays, of various flavors and whatnot. I, I, again, I reached out to um, Aer Lingus and Delta, trying to find out what they officially <clears throat> support. You have your hand raised, it better be awesome, because that guy worked on cow milkers. <laughs> Somehow, and what happens is they have to reboot the system. And then you see all the Yeah. Okay, if anyone can figure out how to intentionally crash the system so that we can see it, I would like to hear about that and not condone that action. <laughs> this. This. 
This is a gigantic friggin' rifle. Yeah. This is a real gun. Now, there are and have been many. Everyone's seen the YouTube videos of, like, those paintball guns that have automated sentries, and they're running, like, a flavor of Debian, and they just shoot whatever moves. You've seen that, right? If you haven't, YouTube that. It's hilarious. <laughs> this is an actual rifle with an actual Linux-based platform for doing aiming over extremely long distances. And it's just insane. What is this? I don't remember the exact stats on this, but I want to say it's like two miles, something like that, that it can shoot and hit really accurately. Yes, pink hair? Uh, <laughs> they advertise that even a beginner, someone who hasn't shot at all, can do a thousand yard shot. So no one, I've never really shot much of a gun, <laughs> but I like the idea that a Linux-powered one would turn me into, like, a totally awesome action hero. That's <laughs> awesome. You had to mark your target and then you pull the trigger and you hold it. Exactly. And it will actually fire have you fired one of these? I have not. I you have not. Has anyone ever shot a Linux-powered rifle? You shot a Linux-powered rifle? Last year. Last year, how was it? Was it badass? I mean, really great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, this is hard for me. But it was awesome, right? Yeah. Do you know what what on the underside it's running? Again, this is so friggin' hard to get to these companies and let them tell me what distro or variation on it they're running. Because don't you all want to know? Don't you want to know that this is running Ubuntu? You want to know that, right? <laughs> what was that? It's a thing called Merlin Embedded. Merlin Embedded? Is that is that a complete spin like a, a complete like Linux from scratchy style thing or or is that based on a Debian or something like that? Ah uh, yeah, I love buzzwords. Uh, Marlin is uh, the same software that runs uh, some three D printers. Interesting. It's a, it's a same okay, so three D printers and <laughs> highly deadly rifles <laughs> and crockpots. <laughs> This is one of the prototypes of Google's self-driving car, right? Not only is it running Linux, but the servers that it connects to are running Linux, and all of its diagnostic systems are running Linux, and the QA systems that they have in place for it are running Linux. So it's Linux end-to-end, -end, and it's a self-driving car. Self-shooting rifles, self-turning on crockpots, <coughs> self-driving cars, self Cow milkers. This is insanity. It is pure insanity that all of this stuff exists and all based on the same kernel or variations on the same kernel. Why? Why has that happened? Do you have an answer for me rhetorically asking why? <laughs> so, so we can find them all? <laughs> Delightful answer. This is San Francisco. The entire traffic control system for, San, for the city of San Francisco is running on this just massive Linux-powered system. Again, traffic control system for one of the largest cities on Earth. Like, well, I, I guess that's debatable. In America. <laughs> and a crock pot. <laughs> All at the same time. And that's so neat. This thing. Have you, have you guys seen this thing? Underwater sensor, the, the kid says yes. <laughs> it's a tsunami sensor, right? Basically, you drop these suckers underwater, and it's a sensor. It collects data and relays data back so that we can have advanced detection of tsunamis coming, potentially saving countless lives, powered by Linux. Not only is this thing powered by Linux, but the servers it connects back to are powered by Linux to aggregate and figure out if there actually is a tsunami coming. Because this one by itself does not actually detect the tsunami. It collects all the data and passes it back and kind of triggers warnings that it might be. But how awesome is that? There are these things sitting in the ocean right now collecting data, and they're all powered by Linux, and they're saving so many lives, and they're so important. And then there's this. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is computer engineer Barbie. I just... just Right there. <laughs> um, I, it's, got, it's got this little binary in there right there. And I believe, what, does anyone know what that number is? I want to say it's like A. I think it's like the letter A in binary or something along those lines. Which I was hoping it was like a secret encoded message that was something like really profane or about Ken or something. It's not. It's just the letter A over and over again, which means she's sitting at work just <laughs> but she's doing it potentially on Linux while she's watching YouTube. I don't know. I don't know. Barbie runs Linux. Barbie. 
<laughs> now, this isn't a product. This is simply something some guy made. I wanted to have one thing in here that was just in the category of a guy made this in his basement because there's a lot of weird things out there. And this is my favorite. A dog barks, a microphone picks it up, passes that to a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi says, was that really a dog barking, though? <laughs> and if it was, flips the switch, opens the door. The dog barks, and the door opens, and it's powered by Linux. And that is the coolest thing for really lazy pet owners. <laughs> this is Tim Hortons. The reason I include this screenshot here is not because it's so sad that they had to reboot the display at Tim Hortons. Does everyone know who Tim, Hort what Tim Hortons is, right? It's the greatest donut chain in the history of mankind. Tim Hortons is God. I love Tim Hortons. It's mostly up in Canada, but if you get close to the border towns, you can, you can find Timmy's. Great donut place. They run Linux. Donut places run Linux, is what I'm trying to say here. The good donut places are running Linux. That's, that's just a really important tidbit. Does anyone recognize what that is? Yeah. Things did not go well. I, I wonder where they plug in the keyboard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, does anyone like you ever wonder that? Do you ever look on these machines? Because so many like gas station pumps are running Linux, or the or the little heads-up displays are running Linux, and sometimes they're like little like remote displays from a from a server somewhere, so they can control it somewhere else. A lot of times, they're just cheap little PCs in there. Have you ever gone around looking for the USB port? <laughs> Does anyone else do that? I do that whenever I'm pumping gas. I look around, I'm like, where's the little latch where I can plug in a keyboard and like start messing with things? <laughs> I mean, again, not condoning that, but I can't help myself. This is a surfboard running Linux. You guys, you guys, you guys seen this? This is amazing. Okay, surfboard. It's a titanium surfboard, though, because badass. I mean... Good. <laughs> Solar powered, running Linux, out in the ocean. It's just gathering data, sending it back, talking about the, the waves and the currents and just thinking about life and, and just being like all existential and whatnot. And it's powered by Linux in the ocean. How cool is that? How cool would it be to come across one of these and screw with it? <laughs> but again, running Linux, just like the crock pot. Just like the International Space Station, this also is running Linux. Everywhere is running Linux. Everything is running Linux. Every country is running Linux. <laughs> this is Red Star from North Korea. This is North Korea's official Linux distribution, supposedly. Either that or it's a really good mock-up somebody made and fooled us all into thinking it is. Because I've never been to North Korea, so I don't know for sure. But this is... This is North Korean Linux. North Korean Linux distribution. There's a lot of weird Linux distributions. There's this one. <laughs> it's a real thing. It's a real thing. Someone made this. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that this is a joke, right? Someone clearly made this as a little bit of a joke, right? But they actually made it. And they kind of made it in response to this one. I'm not going to poke fun at anyone's religion. I just think it's neat that there's religious specific Linux distribution at all. That is absolutely fascinating. But I, I don't understand the point for either of those two Linux distributions to exist. But there's a lot of Linux distributions that I don't understand the point of. I don't understand the point of this. I don't understand the point of this. I kind of had to get in something, right? To all the Fedora users out there, you're welcome. <laughs> I mean, there's just, there's so many things like that. And if you look through, and it's not just like the distro watch list or whatever. If you just look around at Linux distributions, both past and present, there's some nutty ones out there. I mean, maybe not, you know, Hannah Montana in quality, but, but pretty similar, right? And I honestly, I've talked about Hannah Montana Linux during the last two sessions I've given before this one, and there's a really good reason for that. 
I want more people to be building things like this. I don't want just Hannah Montana Linux. I want all of the Disney stars to have their own Linux distribution. I think that that's very important for us as a people. Two people have their hand raised, which I assume means you're about to tell me that you've already done this. Yes. Actually, I was just going to say, last time I checked, there's also a Justin Bieber and some other boy band. There is Bieber. Yes, there is a Justin Bieber-focused Linux. Yes, and I think there's a One Direction one. Yeah. I think it, it's actually made from the same guy who made the Hannah Montana. Well, whoever that guy is, is friggin' genius. <laughs> guy's gonna be rich. And lonely. And lonely. And lonely. And lonely. And lonely. Okay. Okay, now, more, all of the Tesla models are running Linux, right? I just put this one up there because I still really like the Model S, and I want to look at it some more. But again, just like the Google self-driving car and that crazy motorcycle, this is also running Linux. And they are not the only car manufacturers in the world that are shoving Linux into the dashboard, into the computers that are controlling the engines to, to control the timing and everything else. Again, crockpots, <laughs> surfboards, creepy, creepy soccer-playing robots. It's all over the map. When, when Linus first introduced this kernel and this system, none of this was imagined. None of this was in the pipeline. It wasn't even supposed to be a professional product. I believe... In Linus's original announcement, he's like, you know, nothing professional like Herd. Um, but, you know, which, who here runs Herd? <laughs> right. <laughs> but yet here it is, weird, all over the map and weird, which gets me to thinking. This is a lot of different things, right? This is about as many different kinds of things as is humanly possible to put Linux on. Even things that you would never even think, why would you put a computer in that, let alone be powered by Linux? So this made me think of this. <clears throat> who knows who Doug McIlroy is? Okay, quick history lesson. Do you ever use a pipe? Like the little straight up and down character? That amazing man invented that. <laughs> Doug McIlroy is the guy who we have to thank for so much of what we love in the Unix and Linux world. He invented pipe, and he, over and over again, he was not the first person to say this, granted, but do one thing <clears throat> and do it well. And that mantra has been the Unix mantra forever now, for like 4,000 years. <laughs> if you build one small application, it does one thing, and that's it, right? That's been the thing. But Linux is everywhere. Linux doesn't do one thing anymore. It doesn't run on one thing. It doesn't do one thing and do it well. It does a billion things, and it does them ridiculously. So I, I tried to think of <clears throat> what, what, what should the saying be? Because this is not it. <clears throat> so I thought of this one. <laughs> Again, I've censored myself <clears throat> because of the children in the audience. Um, I didn't feel the need to censor some of the slang up there, hoping that people just wouldn't notice. Um, however, this kind of fits right, right? You just go full out. You go full bore, and you see what the hell happens. Well, I thought, little John was pretty smart here. Let's see what else he had to say. <laughs> and I thought this way. And this kind of applies a little bit. No one wants to keep Linux down. You don't put Linux in a corner. You keep pushing forward and doing crazy stuff. <laughs> that that kind of worked. Um, this doesn't actually work at all, but I, I like to say it a lot. So I included that one here. Um, so this one was potentially my favorite. And I don't know why. So let's come back to this. Right here. Right here. This is really what Linux has come to be nowadays. It's not do one thing and do it well, because who here uses a distro that runs system D? Right? So do I. Who here likes it? Likes it just fine. Works fine. See? Most of us do. System D is the opposite of do one thing and do it well. It is the opposite of the Unix philosophy. Does it work fine? Fedora, does it work okay? More or less, More or less Fedora says. <laughs> So, but that's not then what Linux really is. Linux is on a crockpot. Linux is on a surfboard. Linux is on the International Space Station. Linux is on all of these things. So it's everywhere. So it is much more akin to 
to the window, to the wall, to the sweat drop down my leg, whatever, than it is to anything else. And mostly, I just wanted to take this time uh, to put little John lyrics on the screen at Linux Fest Northwest. And that's really what all this is about right now. Uh, but also to talk about some of the rather, rather idiotic, but amazing things that run Linux currently. Um, does anyone, and I, I mean this in all seriousness, I have a stuffed animal under here. I want to hear what is the craziest thing that runs Linux. Hands up if you have a crazy thing that can beat the things that are on here. That kid in the back. Yeah, you, man. What? The cow milk, that was your favorite? You know what? That's cool. I, that actually is my favorite, too, because it's a cow milker. I want to talk to you afterwards about the cow milker. <laughs> <laughs> the picture of the console. The picture? You show me? Yeah. You have a picture of the console? Yeah, running, uh, running Bash. You're awesome. <laughs> You're awesome. All right. All right, you do. I got one. This should be coming to no surprise to anyone. But you know what the craziest thing running Linux is? What is the craziest thing? thing? What is it? Uh, fucking telephone. Oh my gosh! That's so oh, that's so early two thousands, man. A phone running Linux. If it was a rotary phone, you'd have. Does anyone have a rotary phone running Linux? You do. No. So there's a guy who presented at a PyCon a couple of years ago in Australia. He runs a bar and he wrote his own telcon system. He has phones at each table, which are rotary phones. Really? And you dial, you can dial other tables and have conversations with the people at the other tables. And so he like has a party some line? secret phone numbers that he can dial and listen to, like, the BBS World Service and things. And he has his own, like, telecom system, and that's running. <laughs> that's pretty badass. That's cool. That's cool. One more. What do you got? Deep brain stimulation. Awesome. That is awesome. That is awesome. You want to stop that? So, all right. This really is is where is where I leave it. This is where I leave it. There's no grand finale here. If you feel that I missed your obvious thing about Linux, feel free to tell me about it, and then I will ignore everything you said. Um, but that is that is it. That is all that I wanted to talk about today. But again. I really can't stress this enough. If everyone could leave here today and pick one unnecessary celebrity to make a Linux distro around, <laughs> I would really appreciate it personally. Thank you. Go enjoy your rest of the conference. Yeah. So, yeah. so how much do you get a, a